Um, all right, so we're doing a uh, turkey kind of meatball soup um, and adding in a little bit more of that fiber. So I wanted to talk about protein here. So, um, you know, we know that protein is super important for energy, um, you know, rebuilding your muscles, um, for healing. It's so important. There's so many nutrients and vitamins and minerals um, that are in protein that are part of a healthy immune system. So we're all looking to, um, you know, boost our immune system, especially these days. So really important to get enough protein throughout your day. Um, so now while protein in and of itself, most protein options um, are not high in fiber necessarily, um, they are still important. So protein things include, um, you know, meat, poultry, fish. Um, however, these have little amounts of fiber. So I'm not saying don't have them, but we want to also increase that fiber as well. So including things like kidney beans, navy beans, chickpeas, lentils, black beans, um, nuts like almonds, pistachios, pecans, uh, sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds. Um, these are additional types of proteins that will boost up the fiber. Um, so, uh, if you are someone who is, you know, eating chicken or turkey or fish or, you know, red meats, whatever, um, that's fine. Just know that those um, animal-based protein sources do not have um, high amounts of fiber, even eggs, yeah, um, or things like milk. Um, so in order to increase that, we're going to add some nuts and seeds and some pulses. So I'm really excited for this recipe. Again, you know, I know it's been quite cold in Toronto. Um, so, you know, having that nice comfort soup, again, really easy and something that you can uh, freeze um, and batch cook. So take it away, Jer. Awesome. Thanks, Steph. So, yeah, so this was actually, this is inspired by um, uh, one of my mom's soups, one of the comfort soups that my mom used to make. And shout out to my mom. It's her birthday tomorrow. Happy birthday, Ma. Love you. Um, but this turkey meatball soup for me is just super, super comforting. And it's a great application to include some of those extra veg and pulses and beans. And, and, um, and again, another batch, great batch cooking recipe as well, like Steph, Steph mentioned off the top. So put the effort in once, make a big batch, and then you can sort of freeze some portions. Okay, so for the first thing, what I'm going to be doing is we're going to make our little turkey meatballs. Okay, so pretty simple. Got some ground turkey over here. Okay, um, making sure anytime you're working with raw meat that we are working very clean. Okay, so <clears throat> this dish here is going to be just for the turkey. We're going to wash our hands and then uh, make sure that we're working on a clean surface for everything else. Okay, so ground meat, pretty simple. I'm going to be adding, um, we're going to grate in some garlic. Okay. The amount of garlic is up to you. I'm gonna go with two cloves. These are pretty monster cloves, so it's gonna be very garlicky. So if you'd like it very garlicky, go with two or three cloves. Um, if you don't have fresh garlic, you can absolutely add um, granulated uh, or garlic powder, okay? Or especially if garlic, raw garlic does bother you, you can go ahead and add granulated onion powder, garlic powder, That'll work just as well. Okay, and I'm just using a little microplane here. Uh, it just makes much easier work of this garlic and mixing it into a little fine little paste. So I don't know if you can see that, but it minces it really, really easily. Okay, so I'm going to add that here. Lots of garlic. Ooh, beautiful. Okay, and then I'm also going to grate in a little bit of uh, Parmesan cheese. So this is just a harder, sharper type cheese. Um, again, this is optional, but it's just going to add a nice bit of flavor. And I don't need too much, but about a quarter cup or so. We're going to add that in there. Okay. We're cleaning as we're going here. And then I'm going to add some breadcrumb 
to that. Okay, and that's going to help to sort of bulk up the turkey meatballs a little bit. It's going to make them a little bit softer, a little bit fluffier as well, okay? And these are just plain breadcrumbs we're going to add there. Okay, now at this point, if you did want to add some dried oregano, some dried basil, you can definitely go ahead and add that. If you like chili flakes, add that as well. I'm going to keep these very simple, but you can flavor them whichever way you want, okay? Uh, and then the last thing is an egg, okay? And this is going to help to bind it. Bring it all together. Okay, and I'm going to break up the egg first. And I'll start with a spoon. Now, again, this is this is probably not the way, you know, I think my mom adds a few other things, but this is just my version of it. I'm also going to add just a tablespoon of olive oil, and that's just going to help bring everything together. Uh, this is a pretty lean pretty lean protein choice this is ground turkey so a little bit of that olive oil is just going to provide a little bit of extra fat that might be missing okay so we're going to bring it all together and then last thing is just a little pinch of salt I don't need too much because the cheese in there is going to provide a little bit of that salt and black pepper Beautiful, okay. So once I've combined this all together, that's when we're going to sort of jump in and make our little meatballs. Now for this soup, we usually make them a little bit on the smaller side, okay? So you grab almost like a, like a toony, little toony size bit. You can tell this is a Canadian uh, production where we're using Canadian currency to measure our ingredients. So just these little tiny ones. You can definitely make bigger ones as well. But for the soup, I just find it works really uh, works a little bit better with some of these smaller meatballs. Okay. And so I'm just going to simply just roll them out. And I'm putting them onto a baking sheet lined with parchment. Just getting that ready to go into the oven. Try to keep them consistent. Um, they don't have to be exactly the same size. But... Just so that they cook evenly. Right. So, Jerry, you're going to be cooking them in the oven first, right? You're not boiling them. That's correct. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. And, you know, just um, again, reiterating, the meatballs themselves don't necessarily have that much fiber. But as I mentioned, um, protein is really important. Um, now, some vegetables um, that are key to... Um, you know, include because they have high fiber. So all fruit and vegetables are higher in fiber. Um, but some ones that, you know, that you could add into this soup a little bit later, um, once the meatballs are ready and, you know, you could just add it into the broth are things like broccoli, Brussels sprouts, beets, cabbage, corn, peas, carrots, and artichokes, um, or even white or sweet potatoes with the skin on okay that's going to add up the um the uh the fiber intake um and then again like any type of leafy greens like spinach kale collard greens swiss chards um it is something that's like super super easy to include um in this soup um and again while thinking about things that are like easy um you know you could always add in something that's coming from like a frozen vegetable so of course you could find frozen broccoli frozen cauliflower um i've even seen frozen spinach <laughs> kind of like in these little kind of balls that have been um you know adding into anything so you know, let these things do the work for you. Um, they're pre-washed, they're pre-cut, super, super easy um, to include as well. And then I know that there's one more ingredient that um, we're adding in um, to this soup, which will be beans. So I'll talk about it when Jer uh, adds that in. Okay, so as you can see, there, there's our meatballs there. Um, you can spend the time to shape them a little neater if you want. This is, you know, meant to be a very, very rustic soup. So we're going to leave them as is, and we're going to put them into a pretty hot oven, okay? So about 400, 425, uh, just until we get some nice browning on top. 
um, six, seven minutes. They're not going to take too long to cook because they are so small. Um, and then they're going to be cooking, um, you know, in the soup as well. Okay. So about six, seven minutes, just until we get some color. All right. Did some ahead of time. Boom. So I don't know if you can see these little guys, really nice and colorful, nice little caramelization on the top. Pretty easy. Those are great too. They're cooked, they're done. You can even freeze them as their own little batch of uh, meatballs to be used. Okay. Now I'm going to bring you over to a little soup station. Okay. See if we can angle it up a little bit so you can see what's going on here. All right, so in our pot, okay, a uh, little soup pot, um, medium heat. I'm just sauteing a little bit of carrot and onion, okay? So you can sort of start this off before you do anything. Um, just maybe five, six minutes until they've softened. Um, they don't have to be super soft. We don't want them to turn into mush. Um, they will be simmering in the soup afterwards as well. Okay, so you can see that. You can obviously add garlic too. I put so much garlic in the meatballs that I'm not gonna put it in here, but you can add it to there. Uh, and then once they've softened, we're gonna go ahead and add our meatballs. So I'm gonna add our meatballs to this. I've got a runaway. Runaway meatball. There we go. And we're going to add some kidney beans as well. Okay. Beautiful. Such a hearty soup, especially for these cold days. Really comforting. I love it. Okay. So kidney beans, meatballs are in. I'm going to add our stock. So you can add veg stock. You can add chicken stock. Use whatever you have on hand. If it is like a store-bought one, you know, try to go for, they have like the no-sodium ones now as well, which are great. And I'm going to add just a little bit of water just to touch it up near the top. Okay. Now my stock was already nice and warm, but if you're adding a cold stock, what you want to do is bring this up to a simmer. Now the turkey meatballs are already cooked. The beans are already cooked. So you can sort of go to the finish line from this point. Um, and what I'm going to do is add some greens. Uh, this, is, this is a dandelion, actually. Um, really, really nice and tasty, a little bit on the bitter side. But like Steph mentioned, you can add like frozen spinach. You can add, you know, kale, uh, chard, you know, whatever you like for greens. But the important thing is just add them close to the end that way, because um, they don't take too long to cook. Um, we just yeah, want to wilt them a little bit. green is great. Yeah. Um, I will mention, though, dandelion, because it is on the bitter side, if you do choose to use it and you do want to cook away some of the bitterness, um, you can blanch it ahead of time if you want. But, again, it's up to you. I like, I like that bitter flavor. Okay, so the greens go in. And then we're going to finish it off. with a nice little squeeze of lemon juice. I go heavy on the lemon juice. And again, right at the end, we don't want to add the lemon juice too early. Otherwise, you're going to lose some of that bright acidity, that bright flavor. So I do want to add it at the end. A little lemon seed in there. Mm -hmm. And that's it. This is ready to go. We can serve this maybe with a little grated parm on top. And I'm going to spoon up a bowl while Steph, we have a question. Yeah, tell me what the question is. Yeah, so the question is, what can you substitute the breadcrumbs with uh, that would be gluten-free? Oh, that's a really great question. Um, you can use a gluten-free breadcrumb for sure. Um, Jared, do you have any other options? Yeah, so actually something that we do use sometimes when I'm out of breadcrumb is I usually always have uh, oats on me. Um, and you can, you can find like, you know, oats, they're gluten-free, but 
if you know you might have to buy specific gluten-free oats um but oats work really really well uh, yeah. in something like this for sure any other questions um let's see if they come in i know we're on a little bit of a delay so well ah. they might pop up in a minute or two if you have any other questions i'm going to plate it up but it is ready to be enjoyed yeah, and um, you know, you know, having any of those um, vegetables, like whatever you like, adding them in. Um, we know dark green leafy vegetables are high in folate, so those are that's really important. Um, you know, to get throughout the diet, we need about four hundred milligrams throughout the day. Um, it is one of those um, nutrients that you know is really beneficial um and also any dark green color will come with um, a slew of antioxidants um so you know getting the different variety of the colors is a clue to the different antioxidants and phytonutrients that you're getting in your body um, which really help to protect yourselves from any type of damage um, so I love this recipe, you know, a soup, um, is super easy to make, especially when you have something on hand. Um, you can even, you know, freeze them in little freezer bags or Tupperware. Um, and again, you know, having that on hand and obviously, yes, we're home these days. Um, but I don't know about you. I still want things that are easy, um, available, grab and go. You know, you might be feeling more tired these days and not wanting to uh, sit in the kitchen um, and to prepare food. So, you know, making sure you still have those key ingredients with you. And honestly, this soup, you know, if it was a big enough portion, it could definitely count as a meal. Right. So depending on where you're kind of coming from, whether you're someone who, you know, is on that smaller meals, snacks throughout the day or having three or, you know, meals, <laughs> um, you know, it's something that totally works for sure. All right. So I plated this up um, so you can see here again. Like just awesome on a day like this. I think it's, I don't know if it's still snowing outside. I'm just afraid to look outside, but it probably is. Uh, and then I'm just gonna finish it with just a little touch of that parm that I put inside the meatballs. And there we go. This is, this is a nod to my mom's turkey soup um, with uh, some dandelion greens and kidney beans. Yay. Awesome.